whether you've purchased a pepper bonsai plant from us, also known as a bonchi, or you're trying to grow your own or have your own or got one from someone else, I'm gonna go over today all the aspects of bonchi care from beginning to end. So I'm going to cover multiple parts of how to care for your pepper bonsai plant. Uh, this guide in written form is also available on our website. The link is in the description. I'm going to cover how to trim your bonsai plant, which is usually the most daunting task that people worry about. Uh, how to water and fertilize your bonsai plant. How to manage the flowers and pollination to make sure you get good fruits. When to harvest those fruits and how to deal with some of the pests. And then finally, how to repot your bonsai after you've had it in the container for about a year or so. So let's start with trimming your bonsai plant. It's easier than you think. The first thing I recommend if you're kind of nervous about doing this is look around the plant, turn it around and get an idea of how it's growing. What parts do you like? What parts do you not like? Maybe you think it's growing a little too much to the side. Maybe it's hanging down. And then your first step, any leaves that are just kind of unhappy, maybe they're browning a little bit, just pluck them away. And if you have you know, long fingernails, that's really helpful. If you don't, a little pair of sewing scissors can be useful. You can also buy nice bonsai clipping scissors as well. And kind of go around your plant, anything that just looks, you know, it's an older leaf starting to yellow. This leaf has a little bit of insect damage. I think it may have been an original leaf from when it was living outside. And also look for any leaves that are kind of crowding. As the bonsai grows small, they kind of start to grow over each other. So this leaf is kind of butting up against a totally different stem. I'm just going to clip that back. And once you get it cleaned up a bit of just the extra things that are kind of like the low hanging fruit, so to speak, things you can just feel good about taking away, kind of take a look at it again. Think about the way you want it to grow. We've got a lot of little bits growing here at the bottom. Maybe you don't want those there. Maybe you want more of an exposed stem and you can just clip away, for example, this whole bit. I'm not quite sure I want to do that yet, so I'll leave it for the moment. But perhaps this stem is getting a little too far away. Maybe I kind of want a little more bushy appearance and this is starting to kind of grow out and do its own thing. So you pick a node that's going in the direction you think you might want the plant to grow and clip it away. So I'm looking at trimming this orange habanero bonsai and this little branch here is growing towards the center and I kind of want it to come back out. I don't think I want to completely cut it away just yet. As you can see this main stem is coming out and there's another branch in the direction I want to go. I think I still want to preserve a bit of this. So when you make a cut and you want to think about how you want it to grow, what you're looking for is to cut above what's called an internode. See if I can get in real close. You can see that little tiny bud starting to come out. If you cut just above it, that'll kind of trigger that to grow into the stem. So for the direction I want this plant to go, for this branch to go, I kind of have a choice right there. And I also kind of have a choice one lower. So I think for now, this plant overall is pretty bushy. So I think I'm going to go ahead and make the snip right above that lower node. And that's all there is to it. 
when it's time to water your bonsai, um, it's, it's important not to water it too much, but not, you know, you don't want to neglect it either. I tend to look for signs of water stress. Uh, so the plant may start to get a little less shiny. You may start to see the leaves droop. And then you go ahead and water it and water it very thoroughly, very deeply. And it's important to water the plant slowly when you've let the soil dry out. If you've ever like had an old crusty sponge and you've tried to re-wet it, it like doesn't want to absorb the water right away. A wet sponge actually is more likely to absorb water because water sticks to water. And it's the same thing with soil. So you may water the plant and the soil, the water may run right past that dry soil out the drainage hole and you think you've watered it enough when you really haven't, when it's really still dry. So it's important to trickle just a little bit of water maybe water your other plants come back add a little bit more water add a little bit more water if i've let it get really too dry i will actually take it to the sink and kind of water it down till i see water coming out the bottom and set it aside do some chores come back at even 15 minutes let that soil really absorb any water that's in there and then each time that you repeat that process more and more water is being retained Make sure your plant is draining, however. You don't want it to be sitting in water. Pepper plants don't like wet feet, kind of the saying goes. The roots actually need air. They need, ox they need access to carbon dioxide uh, just the same way that the leaves do. And so when the soil is too saturated, you don't have that gas exchange that you need. So you don't want the water to be saturated either. At generally speaking, uh, if you're looking for numbers, uh, we'll do about four ounces of water two to three times per week. If you've forgotten to water your pepper bonsai, you'll notice the leaves start to fall down and become severely wilted. But do not fret if it's only been a day or a two. You may be surprised how well the plant recovers. Slowly add water to the pot to make sure it absorbs. Sometimes if the soil becomes too dry, it simply passes through. Check on it later in the day, and you may be surprised how much it recovers. This is the same plant, not even 24 hours later. You can see it's pretty much completely recovered. When you have fresh potting soil in your bonsai pot, you may not need and really shouldn't need to fertilize immediately because if it's new potting soil, it tends to already have a lot of nutrients ready to go. But after a few months, you will definitely want to be fertilizing your bonsai plant. The peppers and the pepper bonsai plant, they really kind of suck up nutrients. It's not like other house plants that you can kind of forget about and they'll still be fine. Uh, you should use an all-purpose fertilizer about every other watering or at least every other week. Uh, there are many brands available, uh, usually something with the numbers, the NPK numbers that are relatively even, a 678 or a 222. I like to use uh, Miracle Grows Indoor Plant Fertilizer. That's a great option. Fox Farm also has a great all-purpose fertilizer. If you've been noticing that you don't have as many flowers as you would like, you may need to use a potassium boost. So a potassium fertilizer, when you have higher levels of potassium, it kind of like helps the plant along, sometimes even triggers the plant to kind of produce more flowers. And of course, with more flowers, you get more fruits. One that I like to use is Kelp Blast and the link to all these fertilizers are in the description. If you're noticing that the plant maybe, even in spite of all of this, is not doing so well and you're fairly certain you're using the correct watering techniques, you may benefit from a calcium and magnesium supplement, otherwise known as CalMag. And this is usually a liquid and it has a little bit of nitrogen in it. And you'll just add a small amount based on the directions of the container, whatever brand that you've chosen to use. Um, I usually mix it in with my other fertilizer whenever I'm fertilizing and the calcium and magnesium, it provides micronutrients to the plant, but it also helps the plant absorb the other nutrients you're giving it. So they're not just kind of getting, you know, washed away. If you want peppers from your pepper plant, you do need to help it with the pollination. So in a garden, 
there's usually pollinators that do come to pepper plants. Pepper plants don't need pollinators. They're not a species that 100% relies on bees or butterflies, but they do benefit from it. They are self-pollinating, which means usually just a little bit of movement is what's needed to get the pollen to move around to where it needs to be. Outdoors, usually there's some wind, the plant is moving around, and that's perfectly fine, but indoors, the plant is very still. So you actually need to go around when you see the flowers and give them a little tickle and pollinate them. So this Chiltepin Phoenix bonsai is going to help me demonstrate. Here's a little flower and you can just tickle it with your finger. You can kind of like just flip the stem around. In a similar way, you may have seen like documentaries or if you've ever worked in a greenhouse where you have a greenhouse grown tomatoes that you actually need to go around and pollinate, uh, do some pollination on the tomato plants. And a lot of times they'll use like an electric toothbrush and go around. And you can do the same thing if you have an old electric toothbrush or maybe um, an electric whisk for frothing milk for coffee. And you can kind of just press it to a couple parts on the stem to get it to move around. Uh, you can use like a cotton swab or an old paintbrush to, to tickle the, the flowers, but really it's just a matter of getting the pollen to move around. Even with doing this, you may not have 100% fruiting from the flowers. So you may see some of the flowers kind of fall off. Don't be alarmed if that happens. That's just kind of an, a, a, a side effect of growing them indoors. Uh, but for the most part, when you follow good fertilization, watering, you have enough light, and you're helping them pollinate, you should have pepper fruits indoors. Now, when it comes to your bonsai setting flowers, it can be really tempting to let all the flowers go when you see a lot of flowers because that means more peppers. But when the plants are this small, it can be hard for them to sustain a lot of peppers at once and you may end up losing them all. So when you start to see flower buds forming on your pepper, like in this purple jalapeno, I generally only want one or two peppers on a stem. So you can see this stem kind of comes up around here and I've got about three or four flower buds and that's a few too many for this one stem it would weigh it down the plant may just abort the fruits and then you don't have any so I'm gonna make some choices about which ones to keep I kind of like how this one right here is getting ready to kind of drop down so I'm actually just going to pinch away the other ones if you have fingernails, that makes it really easy. You can kind of just pinch them away. Or if you don't, or if you feel more comfortable, you can just use a pair of sewing scissors that are meant for snipping thread. That's a really great option for cleaning up small parts of your bonsai. So hopefully in a few weeks, we'll have one purple jalapeno on this plant. This jalapeno bonsai currently has a very ripe jalapeno, which is red, but of course most people eat jalapenos when they're green, and you can certainly pick them green. But many of the hot and super hot peppers are best eaten when they're ripe. The pepper when it's picked early won't have as much capsaicin as when it's fully ripened on the plant. For maximum flavor and for maximum heat, let your hot and super hot peppers ripen on the plant. Fungus gnats are something you may notice in your pepper bonsai, or any house plant for that matter. Thankfully, they're more of a nuisance than they are a problem to the plant. One of the things you can do is use yellow sticky cards, like this one. And you can see we've already caught some adult fungus gnats. For whatever reason, they're attracted to the yellow, and the adults will stick on there, and it helps break the life cycle. One of the things that I found very useful is an all natural control for them called uh, BT, the mosquito bits. This is a control intended for mosquitoes, but what it is, it's a granular application of a bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis, and that bacteria is virtually harmless to mammals or higher organisms. It really only affects insects. And so you just sprinkle a little bit on the soil and as it waters in that bacteria will infect the fruit fly larva and then you'll break the life cycle of the plant. You really only need a few granules for a pot 
And after a while, you'll notice a fruit fly population go away. One of the things you might notice with any house plant, but sometimes your peppers, is that the surface of the soil may start to grow mold. Generally, this won't affect the plant when it's already grown. This is more of a problem with seedlings, but it is something that you can easily take care of. One of the things to prevent it is making sure that you bottom water. But another thing you can do to deal with it on the surface is use a little bit of neem spray. I keep mine here and just spray the surface of the soil. And the neem will help kill away some of that fungus. A pest that you hopefully won't find on any of your indoor plants, but is possible, are aphids. Aphids are typically a pest of outdoor plants, but of course bonsai spend their first year outdoors. So there's always the possibility that an aphid may hide and come inside. If you've purchased a bonsai from us, we won't sell bonsai plants until we can verify they've been aphid free for more than a couple of weeks, but we can of course not make guarantees. Aphids can also come into your indoor plants from other plants that you may buy. If you've brought plants outside, inside for the winter, I've even found aphids on my dog after he's brushed up against some plants outside. So it's always good to keep an eye out for aphids on your plants. If you catch them early, they aren't too bad to control, but you want to make sure the population doesn't get out of hand. Because they're able to reproduce asexually, the aphid population can grow very quickly. So when you do find aphids on a plant, it may seem worse than it really is. Once you get the aphids removed and use a little bit of neem spray to keep the population from recovering, you can typically get aphids to go away. One of the things to look for are adult aphids on the plant, which could either be green or black, sometimes brown or even reddish, depending on the species that made it inside. And you may also find the shed skins of the aphids. As they grow, they molt and shed their skin, so it'll appear as like a little white fuzz on your plant. Usually it falls and settles on the surface of a leaf. The last step in taking care of your bonsai is up potting into a new pot. That generally involves uh, picking a pot slightly larger. You don't have to go very large uh, or significantly larger like you would with regular house plants. Uh, the biggest thing is just giving, moving the roots around so that they don't get uh, pot bound and then giving it new soil to grow in. What I have here today is, uh, this is a this is at the beginning of the season, so I'm kind of making this video ahead, but yours will already be in a nice pot, kind of like this. When we first make our bonsai, they spend their first year of life outside, and when we bring them in, we just kind of put these put them in these nursery pots to start, just in case if they don't make it, we're not spending all that time and effort to make them look nice. But this one's ready to go to its new pot. So I'm actually doing this inside because it's fairly cold outside right now. So you will generally want to do this in the fall, uh, winter. As the plant has been inside, you don't want to shock it with temperatures 40 degrees, 30 degrees outside. So I've brought some gear into my kitchen so I can keep the bonsai at the temperatures it's gotten used to. One of my favorite pieces of equipment for even just being in the kitchen or gardening or washing out your vegetables that you brought in from your garden is a good dishwashing tub insert. This one is nice. It has a valve at the bottom and you can click it shut and it'll hold and fill with water and it's really sturdy. It's got some nice bucket like handles on it and it's really easy to take it out into the garden, put it over like a five gallon bucket or your watering can, open up that valve and let all the water strain out. If you wanted to just do this straight in your sink, you don't want to let any of the soil go down into your drain. Whether you have a septic tank or on city sewer, it's just a bad idea, even if you have a garbage disposal. So these mesh inserts are really great, and mine, of course, I use it all the time, so it's kind of needs to go in the dishwasher. All right, here comes the fun part. So I have an extra just random thing. I think it was a lid to like a foil uh, potluck type of container. 
and I've also brought in some soil from outside and have let it gotten warm. And you want to use new potting soil. Because the pepper plant absorbs so much nutrients, because it grows quickly and because it fruits and flowers, it's best to use new potting soil that still has some nutrients in it. So first step is just to go ahead and pull it out of your pot. This is a little easier for me right now because it's in a flexible nursery pot. I'm just gonna... That. It's helpful to actually do this when the soil is dry and crumbly. It kind of will come out of your pot a little easier. If it kind of seems stuck, maybe take a, uh, an old spatula or, um, you know, maybe just run your finger along the edge of the pot to loosen up the soil. And with other houseplants, all you kind of want to do is maybe uh, loosen up the soil a little bit and loosen up the root ball. With a pepper plant, we want to try to remove the majority of the soil. Work your fingers in around. We're going to rinse it off, but it's best to get the majority of it um, kind of just out with your fingers. And we're making an effort to keep the temperature even because the bonsai has gotten used to the inside temperatures, but that doesn't mean your, your pepper bonsai is delicate. I mean, you can still kind of manhandle it. It's just that if you can easily do take some steps to help ensure success, like bringing your materials inside, um, or even if you were had a garage, maybe your garage is like 50 or 60, that's at least less of a shock than taking it outside in 40 degree weather. So once you get the most of the soil loosened, you want to go ahead and rinse it off. If your sink has one of these detachable things or a spray, that works really well. Use a lukewarm water. And you just kind of want to work around and loosen up some of the extra bits of soil. Wash all the roots off. You don't have to be perfect with this. It's it just helps make room for the new soil. That's not bad. And this is also a good time too, when you think about repotting your bonsai, think about how you want it to look. So you can see that this bonsai has some really awesome thick roots closer to the, the trunk of it. Got a few roots coming down into the root ball. And it's it can be desirable to actually expose the tops of the roots. Okay, now we're gonna work on putting our bonsai in our new pot. So first kind of set it in without any soil to get a better idea of how you want it to sit. So you might want to set it a little higher. Maybe that's not your thing. And you want to bury them and set it a little lower. You might want to take this opportunity to put a little bit of a lean on it, which sometimes can be desirable. Look around your whole plant and get an idea of kind of how you want to direct it to grow. For this, I think I'm going to set it up straight and raise it a little bit above so that the roots are exposed. There's quite a bit of open space underneath the roots, so we're gonna to have to start with adding soil. Kinda of add some soil, set it in, see what you think. Just make sure there's not too many roots poking up out of the ground. This kind of wants, the roots up here kind of want to curve back up. So I can't really go too high with the setting, but I think that's pretty good. Kind of use your fingers and get in there and get messy and make sure the soil is taking up the spaces under the roots. You don't need to pack it in crazy tight. 
but you do want to make sure that your plant's not really moving around too much. Some of these roots are still sticking up a bit, but I've only got a few, so I'll probably just clip them a little. I'm just doing a final straightening out. Once you have your bonsai set how you like it, the next step is to slowly run water over the soil. And this can just be from your tap. Um, what you're looking to do is just help the soil kind of settle down into the roots a bit more. And then I also want to wash some of the soil away from where I have these nice kind of tree-like exposed roots. You're going to want to just use a very slow stream of water at first to help the soil settle in. If you run the water too fast, the soil will just float and just wash off the sides. You want it to kind of start to sink down in. If you don't have a removable nozzle like this, your watering can would work fine. Okay, once you've got the soil kind of sunk in a little bit and you've washed off any excess, you kind of have it looking how you want it. Now is a good time to go back to step one, which is trimming your bonsai. It's in its new pot. It's a good time to think about removing any extra leaves that might be unhappy and towards the end of their life, towards the end of their job for supporting the plant. You will need to let the pot drain for quite a bit, make sure all the excess water is out before you want to kind of take it where you're going to have it. You can add your decorative rocks along the bottom and that's it.